My name's Chris, and I'm addicted to home improvement. And this deck, this is the latest and the greatest. He never built anything this large before. Going down to the Home Depot, it's a great tool. While you're getting your materials, you get the knowledge. It's priceless stuff. The boys will always have these memories of doing these projects with their dad. My next project is a two-story tree house. I'm going to build it with my sons. We'll build together, and I know that'll be a great memory for them as well. Not again. Paul, I think the raccoons are in our garbage. No, 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 no. There's no way I took care of it. Keep pests out with the new Rubbermaid Animal Stopper Garbage Can. The locking lid and strong bungee latches make animal break-ins virtually impossible, so you can leave your garbage out without worry. Peace of mind starts at Canadian Tire. You're watching CTV Newsnet. Here are this hour's top stories. Thanks for joining us at CTV Newsnet. I'm Indira Naidu Harris. Here's what's happening this hour. Final farewell. A community tries to come to grips with a tragic loss at sea. A Canadian man is sentenced to 200 lashes for his involvement in a deadly schoolyard brawl. A Saudi Arabian youth court has sentenced a Canadian man to one year in jail and 200 lashes. 17-year-old Sultan Kohail and his 23-year-old brother Mohammed were detained in January 2007 after a man was killed in a schoolyard brawl in Saudi Arabia. The fight was caught on tape. Mohammed Kohail was convicted in March and sentenced to beheading. It's an order that his lawyer is now trying to appeal. Both brothers are of Palestinian origin and have been Canadian citizens since 2005. And with more on the Kohales case, we are joined by the coordinator of the campaign to abolish the death penalty with Amnesty International, Aubrey Harris. Mr. Harris, now, while the younger Kohale brother did escape the death penalty, he is getting time in jail and 200 lashes. How concerned are you about his punishment? Amnesty International is quite concerned about this punishment. Uh, we are relieved, of course, that it, uh, Sultan did not receive a, a death penalty. However, uh, the flogging is a form of torture. It's still uh, unacceptable by any uh, human rights standards. Now, the Canadian government has already been involved in his case. What do you think? Is that going to be enough? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, can you say again? The Canadian government has already been involved in his, his case. But what do you think? Is this going to be enough? No, uh, we believe that the Canadian government should continue to, be, to press uh, for humane treatment for, the, uh, for Sultan and Mohammed and uh, to to continue to press for the clemency for Muhammad as well. Uh, you're talking about what you really want to happen, but tell me, you know, I have to ask, is it likely that that's going to happen? Uh, we believe that the, the indications even from today's uh, result, because we had expected a death penalty to, uh, to be passed on Sultan, that this is a good sign, this is a sign that international pressure is working and that we should continue to keep that pressure on them. Are there concerns about the fairness of trials in Saudi Arabia? Yes, we do have uh, very strong concerns about this, the standards of trials in Saudi Arabia. The, uh, the trials frequently fail to meet uh, international fair trial standards. They uh, are willing to use uh, confessions extracted under torture as evidence, and oftentimes the defense is not given any opportunity to present their own case or to challenge the prosecution's witnesses. Well, a very interesting situation. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Andrea. That was Aubrey Harris, the coordinator of the campaign to abolish the death penalty with Amnesty International. Now, the body of the latest Canadian soldier to die.